No More Room Hell 2 released a few hours ago and I tried it on PC and well, it was quite an experience to say it in some way. When it comes to compatibility on Steam Deck, there's no information, but it's UE5. So to launch the game, the first time that I hit play, it went through the loading screen for easy anti-cheat, but I didn't get, I got a black screen. Well, there's a very easy way to solve it, so let's go into desktop mode. Desktop mode, open Steam, then scroll down to No More Room in Hell 2, go to the cog at the right, manage, browse local files, then go back to common, Steam apps, and on Steam apps go to combat data, order the items by time modified, in this case, since it's No More Room in Hell 2, is 29.20.00. Open that, PFX, Drive C, Users, Steam User, then order this by name, Updata, Local, NMRIHH2, Saved, Config, Windows, and open Game User Settings.ini. And this will open in this app. Scroll all the way down and add this command Skip Start of Movies equals 1. Once you do that, hit save, and now the startup movie is one play, and you'll be directly into the game on the Steam Deck. So that solves the problem. And when it comes to settings, 800p, FOB 90 degrees, FSR 3.1 on performance, the game suggested ultra performance, but let's be honest, already performance FSR is a little bit too much, at least in my opinion. Then when it comes to graphics, just the lower settings, with ambient occlusion, just to have that extra bit of quality somehow. So we apply the changes and get into the game. By hitting the Steam key, control settings, and selecting in the templates gamepad with mouse trackpad, you'll be able to actually move with a controller. Now with the flashlight on, on the lower settings, the thing is the flashlight doesn't cast shadows, which is one of the demanding things. So by just putting the game on low, you're actually saving yourself a lot of pain, especially later on in the game when you're doing something. There is traversal stutter, there are server issues. I think the least of its problems at the moment is the performance on Steam Deck. Personally, I would probably increase the resolution a little, but apart from the traversal stutter, once you start doing stuff, the game will drop frames in a very aggressive manner. So before continuing, you don't have gamepad support in the menu, I think, but if you have a, a mouse in the trackpad, as I said at the beginning, you can do this. Quality FSR 3.1 on low settings. I wouldn't go any higher than low, personally. But like this, the game looks way sharper, so yeah. But again, as soon as you get into a place with some players and enemies while you're doing an objective, it's going to be pretty rough. Uh, while you're run running around, as you can probably notice from my gameplay, is using all the all the RAM. The 16 GB that are shared between the RAM and the VRAM, to say it in some way, between the system and the VRAM. It's been basically fully utilized. 10 GB of RAM, 6 GB of VRAM, so it's using everything. And there's spikes in the CPU usage. So yeah. My advice would be to lock it to probably 30, because it's going to drop pretty hard. Especially later on. Good thing is, textures seem to be loading properly. Funnily enough. UE5 does not like uh, low VRAM, as you can see there, it's loading something and boom, 100% CPU. But as I was saying a second ago, the least of the game's problems is the performance on deck, in my opinion. While it works and all that, you need to use a command to disable the startup movies. So basically you skip the, the intro sequence that lasts like 90 seconds and after you do that 
the game will launch and you'll get all that. By default, the game will be on low with ultra performance FSR, but as you can probably see from this footage, you can actually get 30 FPS using quality FSR and low settings. The thing is, low settings doesn't cast shadows from these light sources. So the zombies don't get shadows from your flashlight or all that stuff. You can fix that by using the um, medium preset. Personally, I wouldn't use it because as soon as you get multiple light sources, good luck. The game starts performing at half the frame rate. So would I play it on Steam Deck? Well, no, I wouldn't play it in general. This is an early access $30 game. Servers at the moment are not working great. And while as a survival game, I think it has potential as an extraction survival zombie shooter, it's still not there yet. It's super early. I think it's way too early for early access, so that's take that as you will. Come on. Whoa. Oh, finally. But as you can see, yeah, it's not performing optimally. Even if I lower the settings, well, the settings, the resolution further. It's acceptable, borderline acceptable, I would say, considering it's a UE5 game, but it's not using Lumen. So it's not like we're doing level illumination on this one. Which, considering how it runs without it, without global illumination being a thing. If it had global illumination, I think it would be, yeah, basically unplayable. So my advice for now, apart from waiting for patches, because it's very, very early at the moment, in my opinion, is to lock it to 30 FPS. And also add that intro skipping movies command, which I'll show you which I showed you at the beginning of the video, actually. But you can actually use a controller to play this, if you're interested. So anyway, not much else to add, really. At the moment, I wouldn't recommend this game. Even on if you have a powerful computer. I think it still needs a lot of time in the oven. Personally, I'll just play the original. The original is a source game, you'll run at 90 FPS. If you're interested, let me know, I'll make a video. But the game does work. It just requires a couple tweaks here and there for controller support, plus the skipping the first movie thing. Other than that, it works, but I'll lock it to 30 FPS. I expect like two and a half hours of battery on an OLED Steam Deck. If you're an LCD Steam Deck, well, lock it to 30 and you'll get like 90 minutes of battery. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks again to Torn Banner Studios for providing a code. And I'll see you guys once we get to the 1.0 release. Hopefully at that time we get a more completed game to say it in some way.